All right, what is going on fam? It is Aaron here and today I am actually gonna walk you through a uh, blog post that I've just finished writing and um, I thought it was super practical and uh, I, I don't know how many people are actually gonna read it so I thought, you know what, we're more inclined to watch video than we are to read or at least our generation is so I thought I'm just gonna do both to hit both audiences so here we go the uh, title of the blog today as you can see on the screen here is how to schedule your week in the Bible all right how to schedule your week in the Bible okay so uh, here it is you you've probably shared a similar experience as I have I wake up and I'm pumped to get into the Word of God I've been disciple for some time now and I'm excited to apply all of the tools and tricks that I've been learning I sit down with my Bible, I open it up expectantly, waiting for God to speak clearly, plainly, and practically, except, though I know what I should do, there's just so much to get done that I don't know how to accomplish it in one session. I know the process, I have to observe, interpret, and apply, but I only have 30 minutes. Surely I can't expect to do a contextual study of the book, read and observe the passage, interpret and apply it in this amount of time. How does my discipler do this? How do I have an effective Bible study and make the most of my time? Well, here's the thing. The problem lies in the fact that when you receive the tools of interpreting the Bible, you want to engage all of it at once. Now, this obviously just isn't practical, and so we must adapt the sustainable approach to studying the Bible, with both, of which both honors our newfound skills and our time. It can be frustrating when you first get started, especially when you have a strategy of interpreting the text, but you don't have a strategy for your time in the text. But I don't want you to stress. Instead, I want you to become, I want to do some biblical math with me. I want you to do some biblical math with me uh, that will streamline your approach to your Bible study and hopefully give you a long-term perspective. Here's the math. By the way, I suck at math, but here's the math. You've got one thought per week. Plus 52 weeks equals 52 thoughts, not just read, but studied. So broken down, if you studied a group of passages or a thought, a thought comprising of any number of verses that hold to a single thought with its modifications, usually anywhere between 5 to 12 verses per week, you would be able to get through 52 thoughts within a year. Now let's break this down further. That's a maximum of 624 verses, which doesn't sound like a lot, right? However, it would roughly equate to studying through the books of Galatians through to 1 Timothy. That's around seven books of the New Testament. Now, the best thing with this approach is that it will result in more memorization of Scripture and understanding than someone who simply reads the Bible. How? Well, simply reading the text doesn't allow you to dive into the nuances of the history of the text or the Old Testament connections as studying the Bible would. So what I'm trying to say here in simple terms is this. Employing this strategy wouldn't just get you studying seven books, but most likely thinking through the entire scriptural narrative multiple times over. So with that in mind, here are a few strategies that I employ on the daily and that I know will be a benefit to you if you choose to utilize them too. So here's the first thing. We're going to break this up over five days. Day one, study the history of the book or passage. All right, so your task on day number one will be to engage the historical context only. You've got a time slot of 20 to 30 minutes. And how are you going to do this? Well, basically, you're going to find the book or the passage that you're studying. Find a commentary, a study Bible, eSword commentator, a Bible.org article, or gotquestions.org article, and basic, basically anything that floats your boat, and work through the content. You're going to document the main information related to the book or the passage, this would include, but definitely not limited to, the author, the recipient, the geographical info, the cultural customs info, the timeline, the theme, the connections with the Old Testament or the New Testament. Now, here's my tip for this session. You're going to document the lessons from history. So this is one of my favorite parts of all of my study. Here, all that I do is scan through the information and extract all relevant biographical historical information that I deem necessary to the passage or the book. And I simply ask this one question. What lessons can I learn from the history, people, place, or thing that I've just read about? Now, I begin writing or tapping, and uh, that is day one. Day number two. Read and write your initial thoughts. So your task will be to read and summarize, 
you have a time slot of 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to read through the passage that you intend to study. Today, the goal is to actively read, not just passively read it. This requires your pen and some focus. Highlight everything that stands out to you uh, to set you up for tomorrow's observation process. Then summarize your initial thoughts by either rewriting the text in your own words, verse by verse, uh, taking note of all the nuances in the text, or summarizing the overarching idea, or if you're super, bath, uh, super fast, do both. Super bath. If you're super fast, just do both. So here's my tip for day number two. It's a concept called summary reduction. Now, this is a concept taken from our Taking Root Bible Study course, which you can access on our membership site. Uh, summary reduction is the art of taking large amounts of information and reducing the content uh, down to a single thought or even as low as one to three words while still trying to encapsulate the modifications of the thought in the text. So to do this, follow four steps. Step number one, rewrite the text in your own words. Step number two, summarize the idea and all of its component parts. Step number three, further summarize and rewrite into a sentence. Step number four, try to boil this down to one to three words. Okay, so your 20 to 30 minutes is up on day two. Let's move to day number three. So at day number three, you're going to observe the passage. Your task, well, is to observe the passage you have a time slot of 20 to 30 minutes now on day number two you highlighted the passage and summarize your thoughts but now it's time to get observing throw on your goggles fam uh, in this time slot you are going to be looking out for all of the nitty-gritty details in observation you want to look for what is in the text versus what is not in the text so you want to look at grammar everything from nouns verbs prepositions adverbs adjectives to tense you then want to look at the broader picture and examine from an idea level what the author is trying to say to his audience. At this stage, I'd recommend Esword as highlighting is much simpler here and doesn't look like World War III on your paper text Bible. At least in my Bible, it looks like World War III. Uh, my tip for day number three is... Uh, examine phrases to words and then words to phrases. So to streamline this process, I start with noun and verb phrases. By separating the noun and verb phrases, I can very simply see what the author is trying to say without too much hassle. So what is a noun phrase? It's essentially a, a short sentence or a part of a sentence that is leading somebody to a belief, a person, a thing, or a place. Its, it's goal is to tell me information. What's a verb phrase? A short sentence or part of a sentence that is leading someone to an action or describing that action so i first identify the phrases in the text this takes all but five minutes and then i dive into the words that are within those phrases this makes my observation time super succinct and very very efficient uh, this whole process might take around 20 minutes total uh, but i suppose you want to leave a little bit of time because uh, if you're just beginning, it might be a little bit longer, but with training, you definitely get faster. Uh, when I've completed this, I then reverse engineer my thought process to make sure I got it all. And I move uh, from the words back into the phrases. And at this point, I should have a very good indication of the meaning of the text. But don't start interpreting just yet, because that's day four's job. So here we are. Day four, interpret the passage. Your task is to make clear the unclear. You have a time slot of 35 to 45 minutes. I'm sure you could give that up to Jesus, right? Um, so the process here is, well, you first need to understand that this is the most time-consuming portion of study, depending on the text that you're in, of course. It also depends on how deep you want the study to go. If you're studying for a message or a are just really interested in the details of the text, then take your time here. However, if you have followed the steps up until now, you most probably have done some pretty good work here already. So here we are looking to clarify anything that we're unsure about, and uh, there's a few things that we need to consider. Number one, you need to define the keywords in the original language. Uh, I recommend eSword's lexicon tool, which you can download Strong's and Thayer's uh, dictionaries to assist here. I've, I've realized I've just made a mistake. Uh, 
the second thing you want to do is compare scripture with scripture if something is unclear or you just want another perspective on a topic it is helpful to correlate the passage with another that is similar using a study bible is helpful here as the cross references are already provided for you number three is utilize commentaries if the meaning of the text still eludes you go to a commentary to find out more information Bible.org, GotQuestions.org, a study Bible, or eSword commentaries are all reliable sources. My tip is meditate. So that's my master tip, think. Biblical meditation, unlike Eastern practices, seeks to fill the mind with the Word of God instead of emptying it. So at this point, I like to just stop and think. As this is a five-day process and I have seven days in a week, I may even just pause to think through the passage for a couple of days with intentionality before returning to it and making any conclusions. So my wife believes that vacuuming and doing the dishes stimulates great thought too. Moving on to day five, apply the passage. So your task is to define your work. You have a 20 to 30 minute time slot. What are you gonna do here? Well, your job is to extract the principles make them specific to your real world context and then begin to live them out as worship to God. It's no good having the strategy on paper or knowing the biblical content. It has to be applied. A belief that's not applied is after all not a belief. It's an idea. Don't confuse the two. So here's a few strategies. Strategy number one, make it a principle. To make a biblical truth practical, it helps when you simplify it into principle format. To do this, simply add the phrase, I need to begin to do, think, believe, respond in order to obtain a certain result. If you would like to be a fancy pants, you can even switch the order. If I want to obtain a certain result, I need to do, think, believe, respond a certain way. The second strategy here is to make it specific. Add these elements to your application. Time, a person, a place, a circumstance, an emotional trigger, and frequency. Adding any or all of these will compel you to actually do it. Don't fall into the trap of being overeducated and underapplied. The third thing here is make it matter. Uh, remind yourself of the result of the action, the benefits of the action, and your identity in Christ, because after all, you are what you apply. Now my tip here is a specific call to action for next week. So end every week with one specific call to action that you're going to keep yourself accountable to and implement it into the following week. You can call on an accountability partner here to help with this, or you can keep a journal log of all the things that you're going to apply and then review them weekly. Get this, if you applied this technique, you would have added at least 52 additional attitudes, behaviors, or beliefs into your daily life. Now, that is transformation. All right, that's me, family. Have a quick read of that or have a quick listen. I don't know if you got this far, but have a great day and we will catch up soon. Bye-bye.